After numerous delays over many years, South Africa can finally flip a critical TV switch. The much overdue move to digital should come by the end of the month. While it's a relief at last, the big question is, are South Africans properly prepared to dump their bunny aerials? To help us answer that question is Michael Ulrich. Michael, uh, you've written that this switch, uh, this switch off of analog TV could lead uh, to what well, could make or break free-to-air television. Uh, why do you say that? Yes, uh, so, so, so basically what the situation is, is that um, according to the Broadcasting Research Council, which measures uh, 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 television audiences, uh, there's around 36% of South Africa's total television audience that is on analog, or, or who currently watch uh, an analog television, Te television that equates to around 5.7 million house television households so if you multiply the number of tv households by the average number of occupants of a household which according to stats sa is around 2.51 people you get a, a a a total of around 14 million television viewers who will be affected by the switch off now we know that um uh, uh, government's rollout of subsidized set-top boxes for the uh, qualifying households, that is households earning under 3,500 per month. Uh, government manufactured about 1.5 million of these, of these devices, of which around uh, just under half, around just over 600,000 have actually been installed. So <clears throat> that's, 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 that means that there are still millions of um, television households who do not have a digital decoder or a digital TV set with a built-in tuner, what's called an in integrated uh, digital television set. So that's, that, that means that, that, that come the analog switch-off, which is scheduled for the 31st of March this year, there will be millions of, of, of South Africans who do not uh, have the necessary receiving equipment to pick up this digital TV signal. Now, one of the problems is that government, you know, according to government, uh, um, uh, uh, once once people are getting uh, digital television reception on pay TV platforms like DSTV, for government that means that they are migrated. What we are concerned about is the free-to-air market. In other words, that 36% of the total TV households that I've just mentioned. So, uh, you know, this whole project to migrate people to, di to DTT, that is digital terrestrial transmission, uh, is, 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 is really uh, lagging very far behind. And we are very concerned that we're going to lose, that broadcasters are going to lose this uh, free-to-air market. And this calls into question the whole DTT project. You know, government has invested billions of rands in, in this project o over the years. But yeah. uh, the reality is that people are moving to satellite uh, t TV. And, you know, th so this really calls into question the future of free-to-air television in South Africa. Uh, and it's got a knock-on effect as well, doesn't it? If, uh, if, if we lose that 36% of South Africans, it means that uh, these free-to-air channels have a smaller chunk of the audience, uh, they lose advertisers, uh, they could collapse and people lose jobs. It's a terrible situation. What's needed right now, uh, Michael, for, for this transition uh, to, to happen the right way? Okay, so at Cape Town TV, we have uh, written to the Minister of Communications asking that uh, uh, for an extension of the dual migration period on our frequency in Cape Town uh, in order to, to, to give us time to really get, you know, motivate people to, to get out and buy this DTT equipment. Uh, one of one of the the compounding factors is, is that there's just not many uh, uh, DTT decoders available in South Africa. So even if people want to go out and get a DTT de de decoder, they're not going to find one, uh, which means that they have to go for the more ex much more expensive ID TV digital TV set. So um, you know, with 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 a shrinking uh, uh, free to air market. Uh, as, as, as you say, this is going to cause cutbacks and losses for, for, for broadcasters. 
And it also means that uh, for any future uh, uh, broadcasters that want to enter this, this market, so say a Castle license is another free to air uh, TV channel, uh, there's very little incentive for them to go onto this uh, DTT platform. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's you know, it's, 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 a, it's a real problem for broadcasters going, going forward. Michael, why so do you... broadcasters are... Looking... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, broadcasters are looking to satellite transmission to reduce the costs of, of, of transmission. Because satellites, uh, you know, you're only hiring uh, bandwidth on one satellite. You're not hiring uh, uh, hundreds of tran transmitters across the country. And so it's, it's these, these costs of transmission, too, which are really going, uh, going, going, going to be felt very hard hit for, for, for broadcasters. The SABC is worried about this. ETV is worried about this. The community TV broadcasters are worrying about this. The Minister of Communications and the government are clearly not worried about this because they are pushing people to the, uh, to the pay TV uh, channels and they are not uh, paying enough attention to this whole uh, issue of digital terrestrial transmission. Yeah, and this migration for channels like yours, Cape Town TV, uh, means exorbitant broadcast costs. Thanks, Michael. We, we appreciate it. Michael Aldridge, a broadcast and regulatory affairs manager at Cape Town TV.